Thanks so much for your patience. I'll bring you in now. Welcome, Chelsea. Hey. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Cause yes. I'm yeah. Hey. Are you excited? I mean, you're going to be talking about the, the perks of independent leagues partnering with MLB. Yeah. So I'm excited about this. This is obviously something you're very passionate about. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm just excited for what's ahead. Before you go into it, can you tell people where they can find you? Yeah, um, pretty much everywhere, I feel like. <laughs> I am the founder of DugoutDish.com. I cover all levels of professional baseball and focus a lot on independent baseball with that. Also at Pitcher List, thanks to Nick and Sports Talk ATL, Rising Apple, with Fan Sided, um, Prospects Live, and I think that's it. I, I might have missed something. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know. But well, I think they're all, it's fantastic. They're all very lucky to have you. If you want to share your screen, I can push it up um, into StreamYard. I actually just have it on my phone. You just have it on your phone? Oh, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. You can just talk it out. That's great. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I'll let you have it. And uh, remember, everybody, go to the link below. Uh, Go.rallyup.com slash PitchCon. Support what you can. Uh, it's for a great cause in Feeding America, and that's why we're all here for this entire weekend. So, Chelsea, take it away. Oh, boy. All right. So, my name is Chelsea Ladd, and I have been a big, big supporter of independent baseball for, well, since I was 11 years old. My background started when I went to Bossy Field in 2002 with my parents. I thought it was a Major League Baseball game. I, I didn't understand the difference between Major League, Minor League, and Independent Leagues back then, but of course I was 11, so it happens. But I was in love with it from start to finish. I, I made sure my dad and my mom like went and overloaded at the gift shop. They were like, Chelsea, come on stop we we got we we got to watch the game and so I suckered them into a baseball with Evan the Otter on it a t-shirt which I'm really bummed because I I can't find it and I wish I had it still um and a lot of snacks at the concession stand after the game I wanted autographs and my dad being the hero went down there stood amongst all the kids and made sure I got the autographs the ball I've actually it's still in my room somewhere I think it's back there. I'm not sure. But anyways, move to so many years down the line, I kind of lost that love with baseball because, you know, life happens sometimes. And in 2018, I went through a divorce. And then in 2019, my dog passed away. And that was a very unexpected thing. So I used baseball and my love for the game to kind of find myself again and just kind of grieve and get over the loss of my dog. So I started watching baseball, started driving my family nuts because I was like, all right, we got to go to another game. We got to go to another game. And um, after a while, I was like, you know what? I want to I want to share my views on baseball. I want to be able to promote what I love about the game. And so July 2019, I created Dugout Dish. And I never in a million years expected to be sitting here talking about independent baseball. But here I am. So I am about 45 minutes away if I'm driving from the Southern Illinois Miners. And I Went to as many games as I could in 2019. Of course, last year, nobody went to a game. But I had a conversation with my dad, and he was like, you know, you you really focus on Major League Baseball, but maybe these guys, you know, why, why don't you maybe do an interview with one of them one day? And I was terrified. I was so nervous, and I was like, I don't know if I can do it. It's one thing to watch a Major League Baseball game, and then – actually interview a player and make sure you don't sound completely, you know, just. So I decided 
to do a piece on the Frontier Lake, which is still my pinned tweet on Twitter because the Frontier Lake is near and dear to my heart. The otters, the miners, the wild things, I, you know, I've been a big supporter of them. Even when I was 11, I didn't know what was going on at that point, but 11-year-old Chelsea was rocking her otter shirt and supporting the Frontier League. So I did my Frontier League piece, and I never in a million years expected people to support it the way they did. Um, I think to this day, it's my most liked piece ever. And a lot of people were, were shocked. They were like, you know, we didn't realize this about, you know, independent baseball. And people continue to assume it was like a beer league. Oh, you know, it's just, just indie ball. Who cares? And so from that moment on, I have wanted to do what I can to promote the game, spread the wealth, and hopefully find more people to fall in love with it like I have. So since creating my website, I've went from just covering the Frontier League to now the Atlantic League and the American Association. I have met so many amazing people and they deserve all the praise, all the attention possible. So now we're getting to the parks and all the fun stuff. Enough about me. So in September, um, the American Association and Frontier League kind of started doing things like saying the rumors that things were happening. And so I was kind of like, hmm, I wonder what's happening. Well, on September 23rd, the Atlantic League announced they would be partnering with Major League Baseball. Of course, the Atlantic League has already been, you know, doing things with Major League Baseball. Um, back in February of 2019, the league actually had agreed to partnership and implement Major League Baseball proposed experimental rules and different equipment initiatives. This was from computerized strike zones, the robot umps, and different size bases, just little details that they didn't want to throw into Major League Baseball just yet because you and I all know that that would be throwing it to the wolves. And so we don't need to do that. So instead, they used the Atlantic League to just test things out, make sure everything looked good. Players liked it. Organizations liked it. So, well. September 24th came and the American Association and Frontier League announced they were also joining as partner leagues. So I was stoked because this just means more, more exposure. Um, it's just a way to promote the game even more, cross promote, cross market. And ultimately it's going to bring so much more opportunity for organizations, for players, for coaches, for managers. So it's it's just wonderful. Now, there were a lot of people that were kind of worried that it would take away from what Indie Ball is. And I have to admit, there have been times that I'm kind of like, oh, no, is this going to change the way Indie Ball is? Like, I'll, I'll admit I have my moments. So as a part of these deals, the leagues um, agreed that they will work with Major League Baseball to incorporate teams and in cities that were in affiliated baseball and have been left out by the shift. Of course, the Valley Cats have joined and the Lexington Legends just announced th this week that they will be a part of the Atlantic League. So I'm super stoked because that's just another indie team in my home state of Kentucky. You need that. They have also promised, or Major League Baseball has also promised, to provide opportunities in the cities that lost affiliated baseball. Um, with this partnership, it provides a viable avenue for a number of teams and that were, you know, slated to lose their chance from affiliated ball. The 
expected thing was Major League Baseball is to cover the cost for the teams moving to independent leagues. Um, with fewer players being drafted, of course, next year's draft will be cut and it's going to make sense to see a lot of younger guys who have went undrafted in independent ball. Um, when the announcement was made, the Atlantic League president, Rick White, said that they are inspired by the evolution of its relationship with Major League Baseball, and they're thrilled to be named the first partner league. They value the confidence from Major League Baseball in the Atlantic League, and they look forward to advancing the sport together. Of course, the Atlantic League began in 1998, and they've been known for being the most successful and the highest level of independent baseball. The Atlantic League, they recently lost the Somerset Patriots to the New York Yankees and the Sugarland Skeeters to the Houston Astros. But as of this week, of course, as mentioned, the Lexington Legends, who were with the Kansas City Royals, they are now with the Atlantic League. When I spoke to the High Point Rockers president back in November, he had this to say. Um, it adds more credibility to the league and the franchises within the league. Anytime you can associate yourself with Major League Baseball, it adds credibility. Hopefully that will also add stability to the league and the teams down the road. Of course, with independent baseball, it's not like how Major League Baseball is. Many, many teams are owned by just local people so the money's not always there and after 2020 things kind of were left to see how things go this year for a lot of teams he also um, went on to say that he's excited about the partnership and he looks forward to it growing over the next few years of course for the atlantic league they've already been partnering with major league baseball so this will just add to their progress and their talent. Um, Johnny Saul, who works with the Windy City Thunderbolts, he is within the Frontier League and the Community Relations Director. He is ecstatic. He thinks that it will definitely be a great thing to have Major League Baseball connected to the Frontier League. He thinks there's a lot that they can do on the marketing level that fans will see, along with the opportunity to continue bringing some top talent on the field. As far as others around the Frontier League, Preston Leinbach, who is the director of communications for the Evansville Otters, added, from what I've been told from our executives, the partnership will mean more opportunities in the sense of marketing, promotions, and community relations, which has been an area of huge emphasis from the Frontier League the last couple of years. Of course, it raises a branding awareness and it brings in more fans. One example is that Major League Baseball is looking to use their partner leagues and the markets within those leagues to grow their community outreach in areas not served directly by Major League Baseball or minor league organizations. This includes youth programs to bring in more fans because, of course, we know the youth, well, they just need to. They need to learn how to love baseball a little more. Um, this also will develop, as it develops, um, Preston believes it'll draw more fans to the games, especially with the details and focus and resources from Major League Baseball. And of course, once they become more clear, a lot of people are still up in the air and just kind of waiting to see what happens this year. Um, my phone, I got it. The American Association Commissioner Joshua Schaub, who is amazing, he is one of the great people to work with. He looks forward to the partnership with Major League Baseball, um, incorporating the American Association into the Major League Baseball family. He said to grow America's pace past time, it's critical to bring all stakeholders in professional baseball to the table, which is true because without Major League Baseball kind of giving in and taking away their previous views of looking at independent baseball like, oh, they're the outlaws, they're the bad boys, when really they're not. They're not. Um, it's important to just partner up and make sure that both Major League Baseball and independent baseball grows. 
Um, the American Association, of course, was founded in 2005 when it was announced that the St. Paul Saints, Lincoln Salt Dogs, Sioux City Explorers, and the Sioux Falls Canaries were leaving the Northern League. Of course, the Northern League has been gone for quite some time, but um, the Central Baseball League was also disbanding after four seasons around that time. So teams were leaving and the American Association was born. Shaw believes this association with Major League Baseball will honestly culminate in a, an agreement that will not only grow baseball, but it will shine an even brighter light on the American Association, which is a league who recently lost the St. Paul Saints to the Minnesota Twins. And if you follow along on Twitter, you know that the St. Paul Saints, their Twitter game is amazing. So it's a big loss, but I, I look forward to seeing where the American Association goes on from there. Um, the Frontier League Commissioner, Bill Lee, who recently announced his retirement, said in the original press release from September, the Frontier League is honored to become a partner league with Major League Baseball. This partnership will be beneficial in growing our game of baseball in all of our United States and Canadian markets our teams and fans will all be excited to see the league grow in years to come so the frontier league began in 1993 and right now it is one of the oldest independent if not the oldest independent league in existence right now and this was one of its greatest moments so far um i have to say with the frontier league i i've never been able to see an american association or atlantic league game as of yet, just because I had plans to go and then the global pandemic happened. So that kind of shot my ideas to spread the, the wealth of independent ball around the world. But the Frontier League, when you go to a game, it it takes you back. It's It's the perfect mesh of what you love about baseball you have you can go set behind home plate for little to nothing and hear the ball make a connection with the bat it's i did, i didn't realize how much i missed and loved baseball until i started going back to independent baseball games the the kids that go to the games they are able to sit and talk with the players after the game it's not this hurry up and make sure you try to get an autograph before the game kind of deal. It's, it's a family. And when I talked to Mike Pinto, who is the COO of the minors in Marion, Illinois, he said that this is, this isn't just a job. This is personal. This is a family to him and everyone that I've ever dealt with, with the frontier league, you can just tell this is a tight knit community and, that's one thing I love about it. I think that's one thing that you you lose as you go higher and higher with baseball. So anytime someone wants to talk indie ball with me, I'm like, okay, you just you need to go to a game. I can I can sit on my soapbox all day long, but until you go to a game, it's it's hard to it's just hard to explain how much it can mean to somebody. Um, notable players from Major League Baseball include Tanner Roark, Jose Martinez, who I miss being on the Cardinals. I just, I do. It's not the same. Tim Melville, Trevor Richards, Nick Anderson, and of course, Tyler Matzik. So if you ever go to the minors, rent one park, you will walk in and you will see Tanner Roark's head. And so every time I go in, I'm just like, there's Tanner Rourke's head. So the amount of guys who have been signed and are able to at least make it into affiliated ball is tremendous. Um, it's very under the radar. I feel like you don't really hear about it, but there are so many guys and it just shows within those three leagues how much talent they actually have. And I think that goes unnoticed. Um, and in my opinion, the three leagues are incredible. The talent within them is incredible. 
uh, the amount of sacrifice these guys go through, the blood, sweat, and tears, they are just incredible because they deserve to be cheered on and promoted. And that's one of the reasons I even do this. I've interviewed and talked to so many players and the amount of things they go through just so they can play. Like I, I know guys who have slept and lived in their camper all summer long just so they can play. Um, guys have lived in assisted living homes just so they can play this game. And that's amazing to me. They, they do it because they love it. And it's not just because of the money or because it's a professional sport. It's truly because they want to do this and they love it so much that they're willing to live in a camper or live in an assisted living home or shack up with a bunch of other guys for a summer, you know, and make little to nothing. They, they don't, they don't make anything. So if I can just promote it and have someone fall in love with any ball, like, like I do, I've done my job. And like I mentioned before, I'll be honest, when I heard the rumors of the partnership, I, I was worried. I was excited, but very worried because I love this game. And it seems like every day there's something new that makes this game make me feel like it doesn't love me back. I know we all feel that way, but it happens. And I was afraid that Major League Baseball, of course, would come in and do something to make that game not not what it was. Because like I said, you can go to the game with your family for little to nothing. The most expensive thing is probably a hot dog. And if you're like me, you're going to get like nachos instead. So, but anyways, so I, I was very 50 50 on this. And after speaking with so many organizations, so many players about this, I, I got, I got really stoked for it because I am doing this not only because I love it, but to promote it. And if Major League Baseball can help grow the game and grow the love for independent baseball, then that's why should I be worried? And like I said, these guys, they make little to nothing. They, they do it because they do love the game and they're trying to make it. You know, some guys might play independent baseball and never make it any higher. But to them, that's that's OK, because they at least got to play the game and they got to quit the game and the game just didn't quit on them. So whether they, you know, play affiliated ball or never do, they're still insanely talented. And, you know, that that shouldn't stop them. Things to look forward to on for moving forward, the American Association, um, they will begin begin their 2021 season May 18th, and it'll be a 100 game balance schedule with 12 different teams. It'll be the North and South Division. The North Division will be the Chicago Dogs, the Fargo Moorhead Red Hawks, the Gary South Shore Rail Cats. That is always a tongue twister for me. I don't know why. Um, the Kane County Cougars, the Mil Milwaukee Milkmen, who are some of my favorite people to interact with, and the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. Um, the South Division will be the Claiborne Railroaders, the Houston Apollos, Kansas City Monarchs, which is really cool, and Lincoln Salt Dogs, Sioux City Explorers, and the Sioux Falls Canaries. So, with the American Association, they are looking to start at a normal time. They are taking COVID precautions, doing everything they can. Of course, they have not mentioned anything about fans, but um, just stick around my, my Twitter and I'm sure I'll let you know 
when they do. Um, the Atlantic League, they also announced that they will be doing their 23rd official championship season. The first game will kick off on May 28th. So May is like, if I can get through all of the snow and all of this winter weather and just get to May, it's going to be smooth sailing. Um, they did, an did announce they are working with team executives on additional details for the season, which includes COVID protocols. League officials said they're eager and they're doing everything they can to just make sure the season happens. Um, President Rick White did say that they will be releasing additional details and hopefully a full schedule soon. Um, they just want to ensure that everyone is safe, players, coaches, team personnel, fans, everyone is safe, happy, and ready to go. The Frontier League, which I look forward to because I can literally just get in my car and go to games, like eat very easily. Um, they announced that their 28th season will start on May 27th and their last regular season game will end on September 12th. So they will have 16 clubs playing a 96 game full season. The league to prevent a lot of possible COVID exposure and things going on with the pandemic they have split it into two conferences the of the two divisions. So the Can-Am Conference and the Midwestern Division will play basically each other within their conferences. Um, a few teams will kind of just travel, split it up a little, but they're doing this to minimize travel and they kind of want to see a little bit of a rivalry within their regions. And who doesn't like, love a good rivalry? So basically, I, I really do hope that as the partner leagues kick off and further their developments, people, you know, kind of start supporting and looking forward to independent baseball. If anyone ever has any questions about it, please, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm literally always on Twitter. That's, that's all I do pretty much. And, um, I will, I would love to discuss anything with you. So that's pretty much all, that's pretty much all I got on that. But as things continue, I, I will definitely let everyone know. So let's see, let me see if I've got anything. What's the food scene in the Frontier League? Um, well, Dan, I I have to say it's pretty great. Um, I've only been, of course, to Bossy Field and Rent One Park, and I always I always either get French fries or nachos. Never fails. Never fails. Um, they also have pretty good pretty good moonshine at Ren One Park. So if you're if you're looking for a great thing of French fries and a little bit of moonshine with seven up, that is A plus. A plus. And Hey Chelsea. Hey. Hey. Well great presentation. It's really awesome to hear about of course all the independent leagues, your perspective on everything, of course. Uh, so, I mean, so for the, for the next, uh, next half an hour, what we might do is kind of a bit of a round table with people. If you guys are listening right now, just send me a uh, message on discord. If you want to jump in here, we might talk some fantasy, some real life baseball stuff, I guess for the year ahead, what kind of stuff are you looking forward to the most? I am just ready to be back at the ballpark. Yeah, right. Honestly, I... <laughs> I last year I only got to go to my lo local park and cover collegiate. So, and it was just a two team league. So they <laughs> play each other every week. So I'm just ready for a little more than that, I guess. I mean, do you, do you remember your, your, like uh, your favorite interview that you've had? 
Um, probably with Mike Pinto that I just released on Dugout Dish. He's the COO of the Miners, and he didn't even he he was a drummer in a rock band, and mm-hmm. he didn't get back into baseball until he started coaching his ten year old son or his son when he was ten years old. And as fate would have it, he is one of the most amazing managers in the Frontier League. He's actually in the record books for how many wins he has as a writer. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he's he's incredible. Great guy to talk to. We went from baseball to talking about our dogs. So what <laughs> go wrong there? Oh, man, I've been debating getting a dog for so long. Uh, the problem is I am in Brooklyn where having a, like a, you know, like a German shepherd or a husky or something like that, kind of irresponsible inside the yeah. apartments here. Oh, no. you, you, you yeah. need a dog. As someone who, <laughs> who has a dog and a cat behind her asleep, he, mm. he definitely Ma- needs a dog. Maybe a beagle too, but again, uh, they like have too much energy. Yeah. And I, I don't think I can do it, Chelsea. I'm shocked. I'm so shocked that Ellis hasn't barked while I've been doing this. I'm. It's out of respect. I'm. Sh- I'm shook. <laughs> it's usually. So, 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 so back to that that uh, interview with Mike Pinto. How did you go about getting that kind of thing? Um, I. He follows me on Twitter, and we've kind of talked back and forth, and. I, I DM'd him. I was like, "Hey, I would love to have you have a piece, uh, have a piece on you on my website." And he he was like, "All right." And he was like, "What's your email?" And we set it up, and it was just like that. And I still can't believe it. <laughs> I remember when I first started going to minors games, he would walk out, and he walks out to when he like goes to the mound, he walks out to the God Godfather theme. So I was just mm-hmm. like, "Oh God, I'm gonna screw this up." <laughs> But he's like the nicest human ever. He even does, he's, he does an Italian night and he made homemade meat, hand rolled meatballs for all of his players on the team. He does it every year on Italian heritage night and literally like cooks for three days to just feed his, his team. Like he told me, he was like, when this stops being personal to me, I I need to, I need to stop. He's like, I need to quit. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, so you cover the independent leagues a lot and it's a different feel, right? Than it is major league teams. What, what would you say? I mean, yeah, meatballs for, for everybody, right? Um, yeah. yeah what, like, can you go a little bit more into kind of the feel and what independent, independent leagues bring to the table that maybe a major yeah. league club doesn't? Um, honestly, there's more opportunity for the youth to fall in love with the game if they go to an independent, you know, game because mm-hmm they are able to talk with the players before and after the game they're able to truly interact with the mascot like the mascot in a major league game they have their own little spot they don't really go all over with an indie game the mascot literally is from foul pole to foul pole does not miss a beat does not miss a high five and at the minors games they have activities like minor league games in between innings and of course i'm partial to that stadium because they have a mini golf and wiffle ball oh man are you serious i'm very i'm very partial to that i I, I will say like being in the city uh, i'm used to two things one everything being way too expensive and two there not being enough room for things Mm. so yeah mini golf and wiffle ball next to a stadium (laughs) it's just it's just not what you see. And a Buffalo Wild Wings, like, stink, <laughs> too. So it's, like, it's got everything you need at Rent One Park. But uh, I feel like indie ball, honestly, it's very, very family-orientated. And you you can get in for little to nothing. Like, right. I know my parents and I, we went to a game under $30. Like, that's, uh-huh. that's unheard of when you go to any other game. So, yeah, it's very family orientated. I've always thought that one of the best ways to grow the game and introduce baseball to the younger generation is through independent baseball. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, after the games at the minors, the kids run the bases. And honestly, that was like 
to me, that would be the coolest thing as a little kid. Like, oh, absolutely. Out there running, running the bases with the players. Like, you couldn't tell me nothing if I would have done that. And the best part, too, is if you get PL Plus, you can ask our yeah. Dynasty team who actually, like, you should be paying attention to with this. Because I remember actually going to, um, I know it's a little different, but, like, the Cape Cod Leagues, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which are fantastic. And I remember going to some random game, had no idea. There's, like, 80 people on the, on the total rosters or something like that. <laughs> and yeah, our crew was just like, give me this whole list of names of people that I had to pay attention to. Oh, yeah. uh, and of course, you'll find, you know, I remember as a kid, too, I didn't know who the good players were. I just like, that guy looks good, I guess, you know, and I'd be dying to get his autograph and that kind of thing. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. And a lot more accessible, as you're saying, for that kind of thing. So, yeah, parents, if you're listening, yeah, it's 30 bucks. It's not yeah. 100. No. Nope. Go to an independently game and, and get everything that you want. I. Uh, so you've been to a lot of these stadiums, and I think part of the character that's really fun uh, is, I mean, it's like, it's like this in the majors, too, a little bit. Like, for example, I know at Yankee Stadium, they have this subway chase and the 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 the, um, the ball underneath the hat game, right? Oh, Which, by the way, the only real way to play that is to guess the hat before, the, before it starts, because everyone can follow it. But the you know, true skill is figuring out which one's going to end in before it starts. No, but what uh, what cool things have you seen in independent leagues? Like maybe you know, like beat the freeze, for example, with uh, with Atlanta. What kind of uh, events like that have you seen at minor league stadiums? Well, um, for a perfect example, two years ago, uh, Fourth of July weekend, the miners had a watermelon eating contest, huh. and my cousin participated. Oh man! Yeah, we we walked in the stadium, and some of the entertainment employees they were like, "Hey, do you guys want to do this?" And I was just like, "No, no, mm -mm. no, not not doing that." And so she was like, "Yeah, I'll do it." And so she was like on the big screen during the seventh inning stretch, just going to town on that watermelon. I was like, "Oh my god, this is not happening." I do not know her. I'm not leaving. Did she win? She did not. She went against two frat guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it made it even worse. And like, I'm, I'm friends with the, one of the, the MCs for the minors. And so he was mm -hmm. just like, Oh, come on, come on. You got this. And yeah, she tapped out really quick. You know, I, the only time I've ever participated in an eating contest was I think in, at, uh, in college where they had a cereal eating contest. I, I, I just, I just wanted cereal. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I can't. So, I couldn't yeah. do it. Oh no, no no! I I just sat there and enjoyed my bowl of. <laughs> I, I think it was maybe it was Fruit Loops or I don't know. But then there were people that like had strategies like you drink the milk then you go with it and like I was like ah, I'm just I'm just having a bowl of cereal. Oh, uh, they gave me a little participation thing which I thought was hilarious because <laughs> I, I just literally signed up just so I can have a bowl or two of cereal. Oh, that's amazing. That is. <laughs> But I, uh, but yeah, I mean those kinds of events. That's what kind of you know makes it special. Obviously the uh, the mascots as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know the uh, what is it the the pizza rats of Staten Island, I believe. Um, that, yeah, that we know. Uh, what yeah, what would you say is like of these independent leagues? What is like the most ridiculous mascot um, um, that we should keep an eye out for? Well, honestly, he's very basic, but Lucky the Canary with the miners is. Oh, that's nice. He is very. He's, he's yeah, very extra. So it's my favorite love, color of paper. We you know? love Lucky. And yeah. of course, the otters, they have Evan the Otter. And one cool thing about the Evansville Otters, they play at Bossy Field, which, if you are a fan of League of Their Own, mm -hmm. you can see their field. They actually play on one of the film's fields. So I've always nice. thought that was cool. And it's I'll one of the three left standing oldest state baseball stadiums in America. Oh, wow. You know, there, there's something about that. You know, you can kind of feel it when you enter that this has oh, yeah. history to it. And there's, this is, you know, your favorite thing has existed here for so long, right? That was um, one of the things that I couldn't get over that first time, that first trip. I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> they're almost filmed here. Like they played here. So yeah, that's, they even do a league of their own night. They had had a big thing planned in 2020 before COVID and I was going to cover it. So I was really bummed. Mm -hmm. The team was actually going to wear jerseys that look like the ones from the movie. And they were going to try to have some of the locals. Uh, that will bring that back. They'll come back. Just like right, the Field of like, Dreams game. It'll, it'll happen again. 
So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And they're going to have a few people who are in the movie as extras that live in Evansville just come. I think um, Stillwell was supposed to be there, if, mm. I'm, if I'm correct. So I was, I was like, oh, man. Man, well, if I went there, you know what I'd do? I'd probably shed a tear because oh, yeah. I don't care what you say, Tom Hanks. Sometimes there is crying oh. in baseball, and that's okay. Oh, there is. That's all right. Um, so yeah, quick question. Uh, so is there a stadium that you haven't been to yet that you want to go to? Um, Wild Things Park. It's in Washington, PA. I was supposed to go last year. Mm -hmm. We're doing a like Black Sox league with Joe Torrey. Not that Joe Torrey, different Joe Torrey. <laughs> Good distinction. Okay. They, um, they, the Wild Things, of course, with the Frontier League not doing anything in 2020, they teamed up with the Black Sox and did a little thing. So that was really fun. And I was going to try to go up there, but never got the chance. So hopefully I can get up there sooner than later. So I'm hoping. Yeah, that, that sounds like a, a fantastic one uh, to go to. So again, with these parks, they all have their characteristics, right? Oh, they yeah. All the different elements that are like, hey, this is okay. This is what you guys do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what is the most ridiculous menu item you've seen? Honestly, I don't really look like I just look for. <laughs> you I just know to like ignore all of it. Like, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to see the menu. Fun. It's ridiculous. My dad always he's just like Chelsea. What is wrong with you? And I'm always like wine and fries. <laughs> you got that? We're good. Wine and fries. That sounds like that, that sounds like like some sort of food truck or something like that. It should just be called wine yeah. and fries. That I would I should create that. Wait, that actually sounds like a like a nursery where they wine like the little fries. <laughs> okay. But um and uh and obviously of course to go along with this theme here, um a lot of these parks have weird promotions. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's how they get the the butts in the seats and everything like that. Like what have you seen that has really blown you away? Um, the wild things have Sundays, they have, I, I believe they have, um, kids get in free and they have free wild. No, sorry. <laughs> they do something with their, Wait, bar. Was, like they I have, missed that. I'm sorry. They have something with alcohol. Like they have like, I don't know. I know they have the bar open for the players after the game, but I don't, I think they do something else too. So I was always like, that, okay. What, what, there has there been something, I don't know, like some odd promotional material that all of a sudden now you just have rubber bands um, or, or something like that. Cause I, I can, I can yeah. imagine, look, if I'm running a minor league park, I'm going to think of the most weird thing out there. So that it gets on right. social media or something like that. There's gotta be something ridiculous, you know, like, okay. I remember, for example, I think everyone sat on a whoopee cushion once. Oh, wow. And oh, I, so I like, it was like, you know, Guinness book of world records for most like, Something with a fart. I don't remember. Oh my god! But it, it was something else. That would, uh, that would be, but yeah, that's like a nightmare for me. <laughs> um, are you? So I mean, so so continuing kind of with the minor league thing because this is great, Chelsea. Like getting this perspective into independent ball and minor leagues. Like, we don't talk about this enough, uh, and and understanding it's just it's kind of a it's a different world. Oh yeah, uh, it's a different bubble. And players go through, uh, you know, different situations where housing, for example, uh, they they often get paired up with with families. Is that something that you've considered before, like housing players? My parents would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Well, we I've already dragged a dog and three cats. And <laughs> my my boyfriend. He is, he just got his second dose for his COVID vaccine. So he's passed out on in the recliner downstairs. So it's kicking his butt. So yeah. Um, my parents would just go. Now, um, I do know people that actually have housed and look to they were actually getting everything ready last year before COVID hit. They were getting their their whole house just ready for players, mm -hmm. otters, and yeah, they got the news that they wouldn't be coming. So the, the woman was very, very bummed. She was like, you know, this is something we look forward to every year. And right. we feel like we can help and do something. And so I, I do know that it's very, it's very important. And a lot of players, you know, they, 
form lifelong bonds with their host family. I do know people who unfortunately didn't find a host family. They've had to live in an assisted living home. And I do have a friend that he is living in his camper. He drives all across America to play baseball. So they really do do whatever they can to play. And it's, it's insane to me. I mean, it's the love of the game, right? It's, oh, yeah. It's what is, and I mean, it, it, so it makes me kind of think like with some of these teams, you know, losing their affiliation, what do you think will come of them? Is it just more independent ball? I mean, these people still want to play, you know, it's still yeah. in their heart to play as long as they can. I, I mean, I personally, I gave it up after, you know, I was 22 yeah. and I knew I'd throw my last pitch. I haven't played any like independent ball or anything else. Yeah. I just knew that I couldn't be as, good as I ever wanted to be. And I was that, uh, but I know that's not the case for everybody. And oh, yeah. you got to think that these fields will be repurposed or you know, stay think, alive in some way. Right. Yeah. I, I hope and pray they do. I know the summer or after the Somerset Patriots went to the Yankees and everything happened with Staten Island and all of that drama. They, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know there was a lot of drama behind that, but seeing teams that were cut joining independent leagues, it it warms my heart because if they don't, then the fans and the kids who look forward to that every summer, they're they're not going to have that anymore. And not only that, but communities who rely on some of that business to, you know, keep up their economy. So right. hopefully – those teams find a home. I know that the Frontier League and the American Association and Atlantic League, they're all looking to expand. So fingers crossed that those teams are like, hey, we're ready. We're ready to take the leap into indie ball. I mean, that, that sounds, sounds great to me. More baseball is always a positive yeah. thing. Oh. And uh, yeah, cultivating excitement for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm still kind of locked in on the, uh, what kind of promotions can we do? Cause my brain is spinning. <laughs> I... There's so many things that you could do. I don't know. You could, I, uh, you can get a, fr- <laughs> why does my head going to like magic tricks? I feel like there's a way to introduce magicians into a promotion in some way. I, I don't know. Free magic trick at the end <laughs> of the game. I don't know what it is, but there's got to be something you can do. I do remember when I talked to Michael Larson, he's the GM for the Schomburg Boomers. He actually did, he worked in the entertainment and everything, trying to do promotions before he got his current position. And he did a like mud mud wrestling thing. And like the people who weren't supposed to do that, like, or the people who were supposed to come and actually do it, like, didn't show up or something. Oh, man. Okay. And another guy he worked with, like, had to do it. And he, like, ended up almost hurting the guy, the other guy. So they were like, yeah, you guys can't do this anymore. I do remember that. I do think it was a, like a mud wrestling type thing. So oh, man. That, that's up there. Well, okay. So just, just to be clear, we can see some comments here. Dan says, stick to baseball. I will. Don't you worry. Um, Ahedo says, uh, Nick, you can make me disappear by standing in front of me. Very true. Very I'm true. Right there with him. But you could probably jump over me, Ahedo. I've seen those videos. <laughs> I, I know what you can do. Um, Jim Passon had a really good question. Uh, where can you find more resources to look up independent players? Is there a nice place where, uh, where we can look up these players? Honestly... It's really good if you just go to the league's main sites and that way you can go through each team and check out the rosters. That's that's pretty much how I started learning about the teams currently. So their main websites, my my Twitter. Um, there we go. Dugout Dish has a few player interviews with guys that actually got to play last year, so that's always fun. And some of my stuff with Prospects Live actually has – a few things on a few players so nice yeah and on dugout dish like how many players have you you talked to and then what kind of stuff can people find there uh well you can find all kinds of stuff on there and my podcast that's alive some that some days some days i'm like do i still have a podcast <laughs> but, um, 
<laughs> I know we all know that feeling. Oh yes. And um you can find player interviews. I have interviewed the Springfield Cardinals, um, some of their guy or their PR guy. And I also have organizations that I've talked to. I've also been able to talk to Emily Walden, which that was amazing. Yeah. And um, our baseball life, which is really cool for spouses of coaches, players through independent leagues to major league baseball. So it's, it is a hodgepodge of baseball at dugout dish, but um, I have interviewed maybe five players for dugout and each and every one of them were absolutely amazing and mm. so easy to work with. So I, I look forward to many more from, from that. Well, on that note, I, uh, what kind of stuff are you working on now? If you can give us a little hint of that. Mm-hmm. I did a Frontier League piece this time last year on Dugout, and it has like 400 plus likes on Twitter, and I still don't know how. I'm just like, of course it does. I'm like, are are we talking about the same thing that I wrote? Like something I wrote? Come on. (laughs) All right, Chelsea, won't hear that today. We're going to move past this. (laughs) So I um, actually, I've been talking to the organizations that I talked to last year. And I'm doing a follow-up on that. So that should be out next week on Dugout. And then I'm still trying to conjure up some stuff for Pitcher List. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so a new Frontier League piece is coming out soon. And I just had my Mike Pinto piece come out this week. Always trying to find something. I'm always, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, my God, I should write about that. And then I'll go back to sleep and completely forget what I had thought of. That's Great. And again, guys, leave uh, any other questions that you have for Chelsea. We've got a couple more minutes here. Um, Yancy asks, uh, where can we go to support these lower level minor leagues? Is there a resource that you can point us to? Honestly, probably just going to their sites. I know you can sign up for host families through that. And a few teams have different different links that you can check out there Mm -hmm. and is there a brock meyer equivalent no (laughs) no no ah i'm not even gonna try and do the uh i really it's like it's i'm fighting every urge that i have right now (laughs) to try and do my impression of it but i won't because i've embarrassed myself (laughs) enough today (laughs) All right. Um, Dan asks, do you dip the fries in your wine? Oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 No um, way. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, if, is it just like kind of one thing separate from the other then? Because then it, they, it's, like, you know? it's like the fries are my food and the wine is my is my drink. Sure. Uh, but, I mean, then you're, then you're washing I down the fries with the wine and you might as well have dipped the fries in the wine. See, these are are the problems we handle. Like, after that Mets-Cardinals game that I went to in 2019, the amount of wine I had because the Mets, like, were horrible and it was the first time I'd ever got to see them in my 20 years of being a fan, I was just like, yeah! And then by the fourth inning, I was just like, (laughs) I looked at my dad and I was like, I need another another cup. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I think every time I've gone to a Met game, not necessarily a Yankee game, I've had to get a beer or so yeah. to sit through that. I'm sorry. They're my, they're like the little brother to me. I need yeah. to I just need to put them in their place every time now. I really hope that the Mets are successful this year. Um, but I let's. Oh, my God, guys, I'm not doing the Brockmeyer voice. <laughs> Kyle. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Uh, do you have a minor leaguer? Thank you, Yancy, for getting us back on topic here. Do you have a minor leaguer that you're pulling for? I mean, you've um, seen a lot of them. Well, like in minor league baseball, I'm always pulling for Austin Ross. He's with the Phillies. He's he was played for the Adelaide Giants this winter. And Joe Jones, he is awesome. He did the Black Sox Wild Things um, hmm. thing last year or last summer, and he is he's been invited to try out or not try out, but like work with the diamondback. So that's super exciting for him. And 
Brooks Benson. He's he's the one living in the in the camper. Uh, sure. And Zach Strucker, he will probably be in the Frontier League Hall of Fame for pitching. So I'm always rooting for those guys. Glad to call them my friends. So. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, Daniel Norris. I uh, I want to throw that in there too because I know yeah. that you covered him last year. You I remember actually when I first talked to you, you're like Daniel Norris, Daniel That's, Norris, I, and uh, I we want Daniel him to Norris. do well. Yeah, how can you yeah. not? Right? He is one of my favorites. And uh, I just I hope he can get back to that velocity he used oh, to yeah. have. And slider changeup may be the solution. We'll see. Hopefully he gets that opportunity again. I mean, it was really frustrating. There was a moment. I know I'm completely rambling now, but it was him and Drew Verhagen. We each get like three innings in a game. Oh, yeah. That... I think it was 2019. And just why? Like both of them on their own could do this. Yes. And what was the point? It's not like you're saving Drew Verhagen now drove, or Daniel Norris now. Drove me nuts. <sighs> Baseball, huh? All right. Anyway, I, that, I guess that's <laughs> going to be what uh, – what we end on here Chelsea thank you so much for talking about this I think it's a very important topic it's something that we kind of forget about a lot and we hope that over the years it's something that becomes more at the forefront oh, yeah. where they actually get paid the amount that they should get paid and they have the amenities they deserve and it's not really like this volunteer work that it is at the moment yeah. they deserve so much better so I uh, hopefully they do get that and really thank you so much for covering it thank as you, you do because they need the spotlight I I am probably going to be 10 times more annoying come May on my Twitter because they will be back. So That's what, that's what the people want, though. That's not annoying. <laughs> um, Give the people what they want, Chelsea. Yeah. I, I will try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being a part of PitchCon. Yeah. It's great having you.